Hello everyone. Uh, in this lab, we are going to complete the SEED 2.0 environment whiteboard and set your ID lab from task 1 to task 4 and uh, task 9. So we can go to the official website. Okay, here it is. The description is in this menu. Here are the source code we will use. So let's create a folder to hold everything we are going to use today. Okay, now let's uh, save this uh, lab setup it into the folder we just created. Extract here. Here are the source code we are going to use. Ctrl A, Ctrl X, Ctrl V, paste here. Open a terminal. Go back to the lab menu. Uh, please read the menu carefully by yourself. So we will go through task 1, task 4, and task 9. Files needed for this lab are included in this uh, lab setup.zip as we just uh, downloaded. For task 1, manipulating environment variables. The default shell that a user use is set in the etc pass wd file, the last field of each entry, as we discussed during the lecture. You can have a look at etc password, grab seed, right, this is a user seed last uh, entry in bash so the share used uh, by the user seed is uh, this one bash use print in and in command to print out the environment variables if you are interested in some particular environment variables such as pwd you can use these two ways So just type the command here, print, and print out all environment variables. This is the first way. You can see uh, all the environment variables. The second way, you use the, this env command. You get a similar result. Whether they are identical, uh, we can compare the, these two by save, saving uh, their outputs. We can save it like this. Print in saved the output, out one, and the env we save it, out two. Use diff command to compare these two files, out two. Out one, out two. You see the difference is only the program. All other entries are identical.
if you are interested in only one particular environment variable, for example, that uh, pwd, you use the first command, pwd, you get this uh, present working directory, is this folder I'm inside, lab02. Or we use VNV, then use the grab command to search the stream PWD. Get uh, identical result, but for this uh, command, the PWD, the environment name does not show up. Here it will show the complete environment variable name and its value. You can use export and unset to set and unset environment uh, variables. It should be noted that these two commands are not separate programs. They are built in commands of the bash terminal. Now we can have a try. Here we export. My well, my environment available. We export a variable name called my well into the environment variable space. Now we can use a print in my well. We get that my variable. Or we use this env to find it. Right, that's it. Uh, we can also unset to delete this uh, environment variable. Unset my bar. Right now you uh, run those two commands again. We get nothing because it's uh, deleted from the environment available space. Okay, we completed uh, task one. Now for task two, passing environment variables from parent process to child process. Here, the child process is created with the fork system uh, function and this uh, program is given is called my print m dot c it's listed here so let's go to our folder to open that source code file actually we can open all them together open with text editor okay here's the program my print in dot c this function is used to uh, print out the environment available through this global printer in this main program Okay, it looks like like uh, the program part of it is missing. Right, this a uh, start curly brackets. There's no end uh, curly brackets. In this program, it uses this uh, fork function to create a child process. If the return value is zero, this part is the child process. Otherwise, it's a parent process. In both process, we print out the environment available. So this one will print out the environment available of the parent process. This one for the 
child process. So let's have a look. It looks like th this program. There are some problem here. We can use a cat. You see here is a uh, good. This is the switch part. This is the end uh, clip again on this uh, main program. So it looks like my text I did. Uh, okay, it's just a moment ago I cannot uh, scroll down. Uh, Everything is good. Here, the first case, we print out the child process uh, environment available. Later, we comment out this part and uh, uncomment this one to print out the parent process uh, environment variable, save them into a text file as we did a moment ago, and uh, compare them with uh, the diff command. OK, now let's uh, compare it. GCC my print in dot c dash o let's call it child then we comment out this line and uncomment this part so the parent process we are print out is the environment uh, variables compare it again, uh, please make sure you saved uh, this file. Parent. Okay, now we run these two programs. First, you may have a look. Share. You see the environment variables print out by the child process. For the parent process, you can also see uh, its environment variables. Now let's compare the results. Here you, we saved it uh, as a C out child output. P out. Now you use diff command to compare. So, only the programs are different. So the environmental variables are passed from the parent process to the child process, and they are identical. If you want to see both at the same time, that is one one way. So we print out both, but to uh, see clearly in the output, you may uh, add a sentence print. Let's say here is the child process. Environment variables. For the parent process, okay, make sure you saved. Now we compare it. That's all uh, required both. I run it. Okay, now you check the output. We need to uh, go up a little bit. You see? 
both. Right? Here the parent process environment variables is printed out first. You scroll down. Then you see the child process environment variables. Okay, that's it. And you see the program is both. If you don't understand this one, it's okay. For any students who had taken my course at SS 330 Advanced Operating Systems, you have practiced uh, this program many times. So you should be able to understand the structure of this program. Okay, task two is done. Uh, we compared them and saved the output and uh, compared the results and also we uh, did more we did extra works print out print out both task three environment variables and execute in the lecture we know this is a safe way to uh, execute a third part program. Compare and run this program to have a look at the first one which brings out the environment variables of the current process here in this part. This in is used to print out the environment variables of the current process in this one. This program now let's uh, compare and run it and uh, it's better save the result for future future usage my input c is here compare it dash o my env ok my env is here run it my my env first have a look Here we see uh, nothing. So now why uh, nothing is uh, printed out? We will see uh, later as we discussed in the class. Because this third parameter is used to pass environment variables to this uh, process we created. But this here is now that by nothing. In the classroom, we, we demonstrated three uh, three cases: past uh, nothing, past uh, one or two user-defined environment variables, and past all the environment variables from the parent process. Here is the second case. Pass the all environment variables from the parent process. Okay, we need to uh, modify the program. My env dot c is here. This is first case. case one maybe it's better you just uh, annotate it as step one step one or case one now step two C, kind of way. So, all the environment variables. Here is the environment variables of this program when we run this process. 
and it will be passed to this process, and the process will print out its environment variable, which is the environment variable of the process of this one when we run it. Okay, step two. Now we compare it. Uh, maybe uh, we change the name my env to uh, my env1 means step one. So compare it again. Make sure uh, we saved. Uh, here it is saved. Now this time we caught my env2. Now this time we run it, you will see the environment variables. Uh, other environment variables. This is step two. Step three. Please draw your conclusion regarding how the new program gets its environment variables. So you may uh, check the slides we discussed two ways. And uh, the comparison are also discussed in the slides. Task 4. Environment uh, variables and the system. In this task, we study how environment variables actually when a new program is executed on via the system function. We know the system function actually first or actually executed this one, which means it calls this bin share to execute the command. We put it as a parameter in the system function. Here, for example, this one is a command. Actually, it calls bin share dash c followed by this one. So if uh, you look at the implementation of this uh, system function, you can find the source code uh, of system function online because the Linux uh, operating system is open source. Okay, now let's uh, compare and run it. Here it looks like uh, it's not provided, so we can uh, copy and paste. When you check this uh, code, it's not provided. So we can uh, create a new one. This uh, plus create a new one. Control V, paste here. Now you see it's not a good idea to copy source code from PDF file. Especially in some situation, we we may have uh, invisible special uh, characters. Control S, save it. Okay, give it a name. Call it uh, MySys. C. Now let's compare it. My sys dot c is here. GCC my sys dot c dash o my sys. Okay, that looks good. Run it. My sys. You see uh, the environment variables. But how do we know it accord that? Being SH, how do how do we make sure they actually uh, call this one? Here it uh, we have uh, this command pass here. Could we uh? Run it like this. For example, we uh, pass some command line parameter to it. Echo 
hello like this even though in the program we didn't handle the command line parameters so we, we see nothing as we uh, demonstrated in the class we use another program to attack this program, the system function and you will de do in uh, lab 03 so here you just have a look uh, how you use this uh, system function we know that uh, being SH is actually a soft link to another shell. Okay. During the lecture, I changed the link to this uh, vulnerable version. So you may uh, change it to uh, the normal version. Bin bash and check it again. But this time is the point to this uh, patched version. Okay, we completed the ta task four for. Extra tasks we will see in lab 03 how to attack this program is vulnerable because it's a core this one implicitly if this one linked to the vulnerable version then we can attack it okay we still have uh, last task task 9 capability leaking we discussed this one during the lecture so now we just uh, practice this one compare the program change its uh, owner to root and make the uh, set UID program and run it as a normal user can you exploit the capability leaking vulnerability in this program? And the goal is to write to this file as a normal user. Uh, the write to the etc zz file. So we need to uh, create this file first and make it owned by root with this permission, which means normal user will not be able to uh, access it. So we use sudo cat etc zzz. We created first. Huh? Maybe we can check whether we have that file. You use ls. You see, currently we don't have that file. Now let's create one. zzz. Permission uh, denied. Okay, this is a uh, protection provided by the operating system. We need to do it like this. So do with our G editor. It is easy. We just open it or create one. Okay, let's say this is a privileged file and save it, close it. If you uh, 
check it. No, it's owned by root, but it's readable by anyone else. Anyone else cannot write it, but can read it, which means we can use a cat as a normal user to share its content. Right? We can see its content. But if we want to write something, for example, echo, you want to write something into that file, you are not permitted. You just see ZZZ, and you see permission uh, denied. Or you may uh, change its uh, permission with this one. Actually, this one means it's for uh, dash dash is also for, and this uh, w dash is six. So it's already. 0644, so we don't need to do anything further. If it's not this one, uh, you need to uh, change it like this. So do ch more 0644 etc zzz. As we discussed, this 0644 is interpreted as this one. So we can uh, see we still have these access flags. Right now let's uh, compile the program and run it to see whether the normal user can write something uh, into that file. Here, after we dropped the privilege, but we didn't close this uh, file descriptor, which means the privilege is uh, still possessed by the process. So this is called a capability uh, leaking we discussed and demonstrated during the lecture. So now let's uh, just practice it. So we compare that program. Its name is called public policy after job the privilege it execute a uh, shell so through this uh, shell we can use the capability leaking to write data into this uh, protected file privilege file as a normal user so first let's uh, compare it gcc cap leak dash o cap leak now we have a cap leak execute file make it as a serial program owned by root change owner Change the mode. Check it. Okay, it's uh, on the by root. Wait a minute. It's not a serial program because I made a mistake. That is a uh, easy way. I don't remember the number. Top check. Now you see the Sadio ID program on the root. So now let's run it. K 
แคปเล็กยูดีวีเอาโอเพนตัดไฟล์ฟิร์สต์นั่นยูซีอ่าตัดไฟล์ดีสคริปต์ดอยส์สตรีบัตอิสนอตคลอสต์และอีกอัลโซโอเพนอ่าเชียร์ฟอร์สซึ่งยูซีดิสโตร์ล่ะมินส์ our privilege is jump dropped to normal user is not a pound key if it's a pound key Yeah, uh, it's a root user. So you will cat it is easy as a normal user is fine. It says it's privileged file. Currently I'm a normal user, you type ID, you can see my UID, GID or uh, see it, normal user, right? You didn't see that EOID because EOID currently is also one thousand, which means uh, process. Is also running in uh, unprivileged mode. Now, in this case, could we uh, output some data into these uh, files? How do we use this uh, descriptor? We can write something like this: echo. We use the redirection. Into this uh, file. This is how do we access a uh, file descriptor? Syntax error. <coughs> Empty space uh, matters, as we learned in in our scripting course. Okay, now we can check it. Where this some data is written into that privileged file. It is easy. Right? You see uh, some data. With this uh, leaked capability, the file descriptor, we can write data into that file as a normal user. Here we know currently we are, we are normal user with a normal privilege. So this is a uh, vulnerability due to the capability leaking. Can you export exploit the capability leaking vulnerability in this program? Yes, we just did it. Yeah. Okay, we uh, complete this uh, lab.